So unfortunately, that even though that I'm, I'm taking abroad now, I take him, you know, in a year's hostage. He, he went from South Africa. Was not a Chinese at all. Is, is that? Are we saying that not that we don't buy the government, of course, concerning you know, states and the Sierra Delta, to ensure that they talk to these ex-militants that they should not go outside Nigeria and then disgrace us. Well, uh, one of the things that I would say, what I would tell people is that uh, history has a way of repeating itself. And everything has a cycle. Until it completes the cycle, it's not completed. You remember that if you look at the history of uh, the UK, of America, of Australia, most of the people who went to Australia were bandits that were sent away from the UK, right? And the government and the people worked together to reform the minds of those people. It's the same thing that will happen with these militants. <coughs> these are boys or people who have given up. They had no hope. I don't know if you have driven around some slums, even in places like Lagos, and at 10 a.m. you see able-bodied men sitting outside that says it was night time. Frustration does things to the mind. And you see, it's not just enough to say you're sending them to South Africa. These boys also need a lot of counseling. They need to see hope. They need to understand that they have to turn from their criminal ways. I believe that it's work in progress. There'll be a few of them who <coughs> still go back to their ways. But the effort has to be stepped up by both government of Nigeria and the state government. So let them know that there's hope for them. Because it's when you're hopeless, when you've like almost given up, that you begin to do some of the things that these boys do. So what do you think the state government needs to do to ensure mm -hmm. that youths are gainfully employed and they are useful, actually, in, in Delta State? In Delta State, I think government needs to do a lot of infrastructure, <coughs> and uh, which is already going on. I'm also part of a project that's um, work in progress where they build up industrial clusters that can attract businesses. Because for you to create jobs, you need businesses. Agriculture is also another viable area. See, we have a lot of farmlands that are not being cultivated. Our yields are not high enough. We need to go up and move up the value chain to go into food processing. All of this requires investment. So I see a situation where if government provides the infrastructure, it provides the education to let people, business education, to let people know how to take advantage of their natural resources. There's a lot of arable farmland. There's also water. Hopefully when all the cleanup has been done, our yield from aqua, aqua uh, agribusiness and aquaculture will increase dramatically. So it's an integrated system. You can't take care of one without the other. And I see in Delta states, as far as I know, the government is consciously working on an integrated development program to ensure that as infrastructure is being built, people are being equipped to take advantage of the opportunities that would arise from businesses coming into the region. So how do you think the, the state government now, or, or the government in the Niger Delta, can take the opportunity of this UN, UNEP you know, uh, positions and ensure that that place is cleaned up? And then what next do you intend to do? Well, you see, one of the things that governors in that region have been clamoring for is, one, for resource control, and then secondly, for better business practices, especially on the part of the operators on the shelves, the chevrons of this world, that they should not stop that flaring. Because all of this accumulates together to degrade our environment. In terms of oil management, or crude oil export management, they need to improve their processes. Most of the technology that are being used in Nigeria have been phased out in other parts of the world. So we need to begin to explore our natural resources in a more sustainable manner. Of course, there are issues of criminality, pipeline vandalization and wellhead vandalization. All of that, I believe, with better security and with better opportunities, can be reduced. Okay, finally, let's look at the I mean, politics is always in the air. So how does the state government accommodate its opposition? Well, it's a democracy, and um, that's how it has one of the most vibrant oppositions in Nigeria. And the government is focused on the work it has to do. The, the opposition ha can, they have their own opportunity to say what they want to say, to do what they want to do. There would always be elections, and when it's time for elections, the people will decide which way to go. So I don't think that the government is disturbing the opposition in any way. The opposition has a very free hand in Delta State. Yes, but uh, Mr. Richard, let me just ask you this question. Mm -hmm. I, yes, I can believe. The issue of uh, the riots in the UK, I mean, I mean, you must have lived there for a while. I never did. You never did. I'm you never did. Well, I did. Oh, you live in the UK. Okay, fine. Can we look at that scenario? I mean, it's quite disturbing that we can have that level of violence 
uh, in the UK. What, what's your take on it? I, I never knew there was never a paper with that. Um, the stomach is universal. Yeah. I mean, restiveness will be there when there is a threat to how to feed the stomach. And the, gov- the new government in the UK is conservative, and you know their ideals. Um, cut jobs, reduce this, reduce spending, you know, do that, do that. The big men and big women did better by this. So it's all, always going to happen. And it, it had happened like uh, two months ago. I mean, and, uh, I guess when they, when they uh, unilaterally increased, you know, uh, school fees, school fees yeah. it's going to happen again because these are policies that are attached to being conservative. And they won't back down. And the people will, like, will respond appropriately. So ju- just the killing of one person just packed up that violence. And well, then, well, it, um, it, um, it, um, it, it will trigger, no, no, it will trigger, you know, uh, uh, thing. If what used to be standard in those co- countries like that, like Britain, was that you would always uh, be able to feed yourself, clothe yourself, and they would do things. Government was always there to, to feed the people that were too lazy to do anything about that was unfortunate. But now, all that is going down. The average Briton does not want to do the hard work that the Polish or the Nigerian would do, or the dirty work. But they want, if, if they must do it, they will earn a lot more than, you know, these guys, other guys would. No, uh, the government is saying, we are cutting, you know, the job, we are not letting immigrants come in again, we are reducing this, we are reducing that, we are increasing this, we are increasing It is always going, it was always going to be. And then, yeah, Helen, you live in the UK, could you give us a perspective about this um, you know, on four scenarios in the UK. My perspective about it is that one, just uh, like he said, the language of poverty is universal. The moment people see that their livelihoods are being threatened, just like you saw in the Middle East, the entire Middle East went up in flames because one man dared to sacrifice himself. It's going to happen anywhere in the world. Once people see that they have no hope, I always say to people that violence, especially uprising by the public, it is a result of hopelessness, especially when it begins to happen in democratic societies like the UK. The guys in the UK saw what happened at Tahrir Square in Egypt, and they decided that if they could do it, then we are going to do it. If the government is going to frustrate us, we will frustrate them. It's not an excuse for criminality, which is always one of the collateral damages that happen when people take to the streets. But then, government also has to be responsive. I feel generally that sometimes when people get into government, they become disconnected. As a government official anywhere in the world, quite a number of your bills are paid by the state, by taxpayers. And then you want those same taxpayers to tighten their belts while you stay comfortably as a government official. You must take decisions in their interest. But those, those, those jobs that are vandalized, those industries that were, you know, burnt down, is that not going to that will create jobs for the people? But, like, like I said, you know, it's part of the collateral damage that happens in uprisings. Because you know that saying, not that I really support it, but those who make peaceful change is possible. Take violent change in every state. It is a universal, whether I made that statement, I don't know, but it would always occur. The moment people can't talk to you and you can't they talk to them back and you're not listening to them, people are dying, people are hungry. And hey, you, you're sitting there you're on your high horse and telling me to tighten my belt. And I can see you junketing all over the world. The man doesn't care what you do. His first priority is to make sure he can take care of himself and his family. So people, when they say, okay, you want to spoil it, let's just spoil it. Okay. Mr. Kinele. Well, well, there, there, there are quite an experience like this, actually, the people of Britain and uh, even the authorities are quite an like this. I think the last major trial of this magazine that it had has been a long, long time. So uh, the last time when uh, uh, they, they had this school fees review, you saw people attacking the police. Now, that is not likely to really happen in a place like this. And after knowing what the police know, the authorities and the people are inexperienced, so they will find out. You see, it's the beginning. They see what happened in the Middle East. Like she said, just because someone said they took a fire to prove a point. Now, they were, I was watching the news, they were arrested about 300 protesters. What would they do with them? So they people, will watch, uh, people will watch again and then react. But it's about the government becoming more responsive. And yeah. you can go all out and say Libya is not doing this, Syria is not doing that. But look, look inwards and see what you are doing right or wrong. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming to both of your studios. And um, we do hope to have much more you know, relationship with you. And, um, yeah.
This is off record. Good record. <laughs> yes. We, we, we have a magazine here. Mag I'm going to give you one too. I want you to actually look into it. And I, since uh, you are also a consultant to Delta State Government, and see how you know, we can benefit from adverts. We, just, we want to just to advertise. And if there are programs or projects you think your state is actually working on, and you want the international community to know about it, you can as well you know, be part of that project. We can deploy our people there to go and see the facility, to have a look at it, talk to people, talk about the project, and then work on it. The same thing is actually, you know, for the Sierra Leone thing. That we can we'll love to have a feedback, mm -hmm. see what is happening. And if you think you just need to take someone there and see things and how things work there, no, no problem. We'll, okay. we'll gladly do that. Because we are, we, our strength is one in diversity, and even in our language, we broadcast in nine languages. That was our first thing. As long as you are able to speak another language, international language now, of course, we'll give you the opportunity, you know. And if you do have partners, you know, in those, in French, in Arabic, in uh, Swahili, in Hausa, you know, in Igbo, all of those people, you, even Yoruba, you know, yeah, we do broadcast. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and Okay, yeah, so we appreciate it a lot, and see how we can, you know, uh, no problem. I mean, I have a number of our six of copies of this magazine, so that will be good. Um, as my media consultant, we will just work with them. I mean, it's not easy. So we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Happy Sunday. Thank you. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will.